Amen. Uh, thank you, Sister LaDonna Williams and Mr. Lenny Williams. At this time, uh, here to present our next living legend is Sister Delisa Porsche. Amen. Would you come? living legend, Dr. Roy D. Wilson. Mm -hmm. He serves as executive director of the Martin Luther King Jr. Freedom Center and as executive producer of the Barbara Lee and Elihu Harris lecture series right here in Oakland. He is also the executive director and co-founder of the Institute for Community Leadership in the state of Washington. Along with team members, Dr. Wilson created the 20-acre Jack O'Dell Education Center near Tacoma, Washington. Dr. Wilson's career expands over 50 years of community organizing with a focus on contributing to intergenerational and interracial efforts at building Dr. King's beloved community and confronting Dr. King's triplets of injustice, racism, materialism, and militarism. Past organization efforts include collaborations with government departments, higher education institutions, and community organizations in various nations, including Miami-Dade County Teen Court in Florida, Office of Superintendent in Washington State, Yolo County Office of Education in California, the Universidad de Jose Enrique Verona in Cuba, the Universidad de Veracruz in Mexico, Unity University in Ethiopia, University of Washington Department of Minority Affairs, Managua Seattle Sister City Association, Ministry of Culture and the Ministry of Education in Nicaragua, the Solentin name Community Co Co Christian community in Nicaragua, the Kenault Indian Nation, the Yakima Indian Nation, the Nisqually Indian Nation, the Colville Indian Nation in Washington State, and the National Rainbow Coalition based in Chicago, Illinois. Wilson has worked his adult life in Latino and farm worker organizations, African American organizations, and with tribes producing adult and youth empowerment education. He worked for 11 years for Jack O'Dell in the International Relations Department of the National Rainbow Coalition and 22 years as the Director of International Affairs at El Centro de la Raza in Washington State. He has a bachelor's degree in English a master's degree in creative writing, both from the University of Washington, and an educational doctorate in educational leadership and change from Fielding Graduate University. As a published author, scholar, and presenter on civil rights, nonviolence, and liberatory leadership practices, his published works have been featured in Life Magazine, The New York Times, Washington Post, Miami Herald, Seattle Times, Oakland Tribune, and various newspapers in Central America. Wilson has created an extensive democracy education curriculum and has taught nonviolence and civil human rights history in over 90 school districts in 10 states of the United States, Mexico, and Nicaragua. Dr. Wilson and his lovely wife, Dr. Karen Bulky, currently reside in Oakland, California and Kent, Washington. They were blessed to foster eight children who are now wonderful young adults. Together they share leadership and teaching responsibilities at the Martin Luther King Jr. Freedom Center and the Institute for Community Leadership. I now present the Living Legend Award to Dr. D, Dr. Roy D. Wilson.
Good morning. Mr. Williams, it's a joy to sit in a pew with you and to feel the energy. One of my favorite groups that uh, I would not know to be blessed with the connection live here at BB. It's an honor. To Reverend Shine and First Lady Layla Shine, thank you for your leadership and guidance. <laughs> to the uh, BB leadership team, thank you for helping us on the road. And for all of the BB family, thank you very much for what you do. Uh, thank you to my wife, comrade, Karen Bolke. And I want to point out and introduce my a segment of our large army of Wilsons. Uh, my nephew, Lance Wilson, and go ahead, Lance. Yes, his, his daughter, Taylor. His son, Quincy, and grandson, Eric, and Jada Miles, Jaden. Hi, Jada Miles. And thank you to the wonderful team of the Martin Luther King Jr. Freedom Center, our board, our staff, our youth, and their families. Let me uh, point out to uh, my mentor and wonderful human being, the Honorable Elihu Harris, <laughs> Mayor, Assembly Member, Judge, Chancellor, and mentor to dozens and dozens of fine progressive leaders throughout California and beyond. Elihu, it's a joy and a deep honor to be considered your friend. And you're definitely my friend. <laughs> the lights are preventing me from seeing you, Kim, but is Kim Thompson here? <laughs> Hi, Kim. Uh, Kim Thompson's a board member of the Martin Luther King Jr. Freedom Center and a recipient of the Black History Month uh, Legacy Awards next week. And we'll see you again. Thank you. Um, bless Black History Month. Black History Month has its origins at the beginning of Jim Crow. when, in an effort to stamp out the victories of the Civil War and the gains of Reconstruction, white supremacist plantation owners, bankers, corporate owners, put together wicked and vile networks of professionals, workers, farmers, artists, and intellectuals who are dedicated to returning to slavery. The Confederacy did not die. It metastasized and spread throughout the nation, including California. It's for another time that we should talk about it but it's, uh, the Confederacy is much alive today. And there's much to be learned of why it seems to come and go. It doesn't. It's there. It's the battle for justice that causes it to be evident or not so evident. Black history is American history. It is not a subset. It is the heart of American history. 
Every effort in America for equality, jobs, health care, education, infrastructure development, in short, every effort for a better democracy is led by the African American community. There are three, not four, not five, three historical roots of the struggle for justice and dignity in the United States. First, the African American struggle for democracy. Second, the indigenous tribal nation struggle for sovereignty. And third, the working class struggle for jobs and wages and safety. Other struggles have come along through the years, and they are important. But these three struggles form a triplet of light and hope. And why is the African-American struggle the center of that? Well, the labor movement needed to be pulled into unity. It needed to be led into unity. And it was pulled and led by the African-American community to be a righteous labor movement. And not to be too controversial, Pastor, that battle is present today. A quick note, because I, I uh, was born and raised on tribal land, uh, and it's just important for today to make a mention that tribes themselves, many of them, became slave owners. Dr. Carter G. Woodson, the principal founder of Black History Week, the predecessor of Black History Month, organized the Association for the Study of Amer African American Life and History in 1915. That's just 50 years after the end of the Civil War. Dr. Woodson was extremely focused and interested in creating teams of thinkers and doers who would focus on educating the masses to pursue excellence in all endeavors, but to never leave the community behind. Black History Month demands we educate for civic participation, moral and ethical servantship, and leadership in this nation. Here are some things and ways we can help make Black History Month a daily occurrence. First, in formal education in public schools, we must continue to reveal, to unpackage the Black contribution to our struggle today and of yesterday and forecasting the struggle of unity for tomorrow. The, we must definitely I, focus on what Dr. King calls the battle against the triplets of evil in the United States, racism, economic and wealth inequality, and war and violence. We can also, and must, shop at black-owned businesses, hire black contractors and vendors, seek out black doctors and other health professionals. When you need a lawyer, hire a black lawyer. You need an accountant, black accountant. You need to invest in a, a Wall Street, get an investment specialist uh, that's black. The music, culture, art, historically demonstrated. We need to invest in school and community projects that give our children opportunities to practice their culture appropriately, meaning black-led, so that they develop in their spirit 
the responsibility of representing the people. We have to do a better job of promoting the historical black uh, colleges and universities. Brother, our sister, uh, Vicki Stoneham, an excellent, excellent teacher, could probably verify this. Yes, there are some counselors in some schools that have a modest knowledge of the uh, HBCUs. But we need to develop a campaign where every high school in America actively promotes the value of the historical black college and universities to the student, the families, and the nation. We need to do that. In other words, we need to be everyday recruiters. I think you know our children are under attack. All children are incarcerated in a virtual world of selfishness, drama, and trauma. Almost all fights in today's high school begin online. And they're carried out the next day in the hallway. But this trauma strikes African-American students much more perniciously. They are the victims of more insults, more acts of aggression, more acts of indifference than any others. In fact, in many schools, black students are considered suspect and even criminal which is a horrific crime that they would ever be put in that situation. We must get our grandparents into these schools to be the guides and examples who can inspire students and teachers to strive for excellence. In doing this, our grandparents will help develop the character and the conduct not only of the students, but of the teachers and the administrators, so that people of all races and cultures can grow together. And finally, we must integrate our children into the arduous work of real political, social, economic, and environmental struggles. They deserve and must be given direct access to organizing, to community development. In doing so, people of all ages, all races will be uplifted, and the nation will stand a much better chance of becoming a peaceful neighbor in a world house. Bless Black History Month. May we live each day in a serious effort to organize and educate thousands and thousands to develop a participatory, robust, pluralist democracy. If we do this, we can help heal the planet and guarantee the longevity of the human race. Thank you. Thank you.